Okay, now I have something serious that I want to talk to you about, and this is important, so I really want you to listen to me. You know, we saw earlier, you might remember that if I give you something like x squared equals 25, of course, you could bring this over to the other side, you can factor the difference of two perfect squares and find the answer, plus or minus 5. And that's the way that I like you to think about doing it. Of course, the lazy person's approach would be just to take square roots of both sides, but you have to remember plus or minus square roots because there are these two answers. So you could just then go from here and say, well, square rooting both sides, I'd have x equals plus or minus the square root of 25, which would equal plus or minus 5. And there's your answer. Okay, well, that works actually pretty well whenever you have something squared equals a number. You just take plus or minus the square roots of both sides, right? If I, for example, say to you x squared equals 9, well, you could say x equals plus or minus square root of 9 or plus or minus 3. Not a problem. If I say to you x squared equals 2, even that's not a problem, because you could say x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. Point is, if you have something that's just a perfect square here, and it equals something, I can just take plus or minus the square roots of both sides and be done with you. However, let's consider the following extremely annoying example. x squared plus 6x plus 1 equals 0. Let me tell you that this is not going to be pretty. Okay? The first thing that I would do, if I were me, and I am, is to try to factor. Can't pull anything out. There's no common factor there. It's a trinomial, so let me just try it. x and x, both the same sign, both positive. Now I need to put a number in here that multiplies to give 1 and combines to give 6. Well, 1 and 1, or like a half and 2, or something, none of those work. So in fact, this is something that I can't factor using this technique. Can't be factored. And that really is annoying. Because if it can't be factored, how in the world am I going to solve this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember this idea that I just just told you about, which is if I had a perfect square equal a number, I could take plus or minus the square root of both sides. Well, one may be tempted to say, oh, okay, what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring this stuff over to the other side and then take square roots, because I have a perfect square here. But the problem is then I'll have x's there too. So then I'll have x's under a square root. And let me tell you, as much as I hate having x's with squares, I hate x's under square roots that much more. So, so what in the world could I possibly do? Well, the fantasy is going to be to try to take these people here and turn that into a perfect square. So I want to take these and turn this into a perfect square. This technique, by the way, is called completing the square. And why? It's because it's as though you have something like this, and you want to now make it into a perfect square. So you want to add extra stuff, and all of a sudden, whoop, it's a perfect square. So I can take square roots of both sides. So this is called completing the square. I start off with something that's not a square, and I just tack on a little bit more, add something, and all of a sudden it becomes square. See it? Neep, neep. Little visual aid there. Looks like California, doesn't it? Gone to California in my mind. Okay, now, here is the method for completing the square. Step one, bing, is to move any constant you may have any number that doesn't have an x, to the right. I know this doesn't feel right. I'm telling you, this is going to be serious business because you always want to have things equal 0 so you can factor. But we tried factoring. It failed. Now let's move on. So to complete the square, I'm going to take this and move it to the other side. So move all constants over to the right-hand side. So now it looks like that. But actually, now what I'm going to do is complete the square. I'm going to add something in to make the thing a square. So what am I going to add in to make the thing a square? Well, here's what I'm going to first of all do. First of all, when I write these things, I put a huge space because I'm going to put something in there. Now, to keep this equal sign legitimate, whatever I add or subtract here, I have to add or subtract the same thing here. And now here's what you do. 
you take a look at the coefficient in front of the x term. Notice that's a plus 6. Take half of it, so take the plus 6, take half of it, what does that equal? That would equal plus 3, and now square it. And that equals 9. That is the number that's going to complete the square. Let me say that again. The procedure is always the same. Take whatever the coefficient is in front of the x term and take half of it, take that answer and square it, and that's what you get. Okay, now, so remember, I'm always starting off with saying it looks like this, has the x squared out in front. So now I'm going to add 9 to that side, but then to keep this thing balanced, I have to add it on that side too. Okay, and now what do I see? Well, now, don't start moving things over. You see, sometimes people have to do all this work. They go, okay, I'll move everything over and try to factor. If you move everything over and try to factor, you're going to get exactly this. Because these will cancel out and you're going to get the same thing. So then you're going to undo what you're doing. Don't do that. Instead, keep this segregated from this. Okay. Now, this thing should factor. And if we did it correctly and carefully, it should be a perfect square. So let's see if it really is a perfect square. x, x, same sign, positive. 3, 3. Let's check. 3x and 3x is 6x. 3 times 3 is 9. Perfect square. And on this side, we have an 8. So what I see is x plus 3 all squared equals 8. Well, how can I solve this? Well, now that I have perfect square, I can take plus or minus square roots. And so what I see is, let me bring this way over here so you can still look at that. What I'd see is the following. I'd see x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 8. Now I want x alone, so I'll bring this 3 over to the other side, so I subtract it. So I see x equals minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 8. Now actually the square root of 8, we can simplify that a little teeny bit if we wanted to, because remember that 8 equals 4 times 2. So the square root of 8 would equal the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 4 is just 2, and so I'd have 2 square root of 2. So I could actually write this as 2 square root of 2. So I could say this, that x equals minus 3 plus or minus 2 square root of 2. So there's two answers here, and let me just make sure you see what they are. x equals minus 3 plus 2 square root of 2, or x equals minus 3 minus 2 square root of 2. That's what this plus or minus means. It means you write everything down first with a plus, then everything down next with a minus. These are two different answers, and they turn out both to solve or to satisfy that original equation, the one that went x squared plus 6x plus 1 equals 0. You can plug those in and see. Now you can see why I couldn't factor it. You see this all sorts of square root stuff there. And the way I did it was to complete the square. The method was, since I have something that looks like this, I bring this over, take half of this, and square it. Okay. Next up, I'm going to show you an example where we have to use a slightly, slightly different approach because there'll be something in front of the x squared. This method is going to work when you have nothing in front of the x squared. If something in front of the x squared, you have to do one little teeny thing. I'll show you what that is next.